Not long from now, Axiom Space is expecting the first module of its commercial space station to arrive in Houston and begin launch prep. Over the last year or so, the plans have changed quite a bit regarding both the design of the station and its interaction with the International Space Station. Currently, the plan is to launch and dock the first module to the ISS. After that, before the second module arrives, the initial segment will detach and start operating independently. A big part of this change of plans has to do with the fact that the first station segment was meant to launch over a year ago, in addition to the ISS nearing retirement. Here I'll go more in depth into the station's progress, the change of plans, what to expect in the future, and more. Just a few days ago, Axiom posted a new video of progress on the station's payload, power, and thermal module pressure vessel, the first segment, which will dock to the ISS. They just need to connect the aft and forward sections, followed by completing flight certification tests. Axiom confirmed that those hatches have been finished, tested, and shipped to the factory for installation. That being said, they're currently working to repurpose various station segments to account for mission changes. For context, the first module would have likely been done and shipped to the US much sooner had Axiom and NASA not changed the plans. Originally, Axiom wanted the first module to launch in 2024, and its primary purpose was to provide crew quarters. Then in 2025, the second segment connects, providing additional space for crew. In 2026, we would see the lab module, featuring an added viewing room and more space. Finally, in 2027, the power module would attach, completing the station and allowing it to separate from the ISS and become an independent commercial station. As time went on, it became clear that the schedule and plan wasn't going to work. At that point, Axiom and NASA decided to have the first module become what they call the Payload, Power, and Thermal module. Instead of crew quarters, the module's focus, as the name suggests, is power, meaning they could separate just this module and have the station support itself. In a statement from NASA, they commented, Under the company's new assembly sequence, the Payload, Power, and Thermal module will launch to the orbiting laboratory first, allowing it to depart as early as 2028 and become a free-flying destination known as Axiom Station. In free flight, Axiom Space will continue assembly of the commercial destination, adding the Habitat 1 module, an airlock, Habitat 2 module, and the research and manufacturing facility. The commercial low Earth orbit development program manager at NASA said, the updated assembly sequence has been coordinated with NASA to support both NASA and Axiom Space needs and plans for a smooth transition in low Earth orbit. The reality is they were running out of time, and it became clear that the fourth module, a part of the original plan, wouldn't have launched before the ISS retired. To build this new module, they're repurposing various sections of the original station modules. Specifically, it's utilizing structural elements from Axiom Hab 1 and Hab 2. Elements from these modules are already underway and will be backfilled, Axiom Hab 1 being the priority to enable its rendezvous with the power and thermal module once separated from the International Space Station. The CTO at Axiom was quoted saying, Because we're using 85% of the stuff, and in some cases simplifying because we won't need all the life support for the first module, we can still launch that first module. Even with current progress and the first segment not far from completion, the company has stated that the first launch will happen no earlier than 2027. Between now and then, the company needs more time for construction and to work on the other systems core to the station's operation. For example, Axiom's propulsion team recently started its testing of the eighth version of Axiom station thrusters, which they call Mark 8. When they're done, they'll install 32 thrusters on the first module. Earlier this month, the FAA also officially granted a favorable payload determination for the payload, power, and thermal module. Now Axiom just needs to finish it and prepare it for launch. The original plan to connect to the ISS over the course of years meant it could use the station to support it as it built up over time. With the changes, it begs the question of what purpose does it even serve if Axiom plans to separate after attaching just a single module. On Axiom's website, they're quoted saying, Payload power thermal module bursts to the International Space Station and facilitates the transfer of critical infrastructure and payloads. In other words, with the ISS set to retire not long after, we could see valuable equipment moved from the station onto Axiom's module. In relation to this, it's said that the new module will have significantly more storage than the original HAB-1, meaning more space for equipment being moved from the ISS. Originally, in 2020, NASA awarded Axiom a firm fixed price, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contract with a maximum potential value, inclusive of options, of $140 million. This was over a seven-year ordering period consisting of a five-year base period and a two-year option. A lot of time has passed since then as the company still tries to get the first module complete. Taking a closer look at the revised plan, there are five modules in total. After the power module, the second segment is called HAB-1. This module will connect right after the first separates from the ISS. It provides four crew quarters and will also enable research and manufacturing capabilities. Next is the specific airlock segment. This module would add extravehicular activity support in conjunction with Axiom spacesuit. The fourth launch would be HAB-2, adding more crew quarters. 
Finally, they would send the Research and Manufacturing, or RMF, module. Besides space for science, it would also include a massive viewing room. While there have been a lot of delays, progress is still being made. Earlier this year, Axiom completed a successful execution of the first simulated mission of the Payload, Power, and Thermal module. The scenario involved an approach initiation burn to guide the module toward the International Space Station for rendezvous and capture. In a statement, they said, conducted within Axiom Space's Mission Control Center A, this effort brought together a cross-disciplinary team of simulator engineers, user interface display developers, and the Mission Services Flight Control Team to integrate previously separate efforts into a cohesive operational framework. The team used prototype displays for guidance, navigation and control, propulsion, communication, and power systems. This demonstration served as a critical step in aligning the infrastructure and personnel necessary to prepare Axiom Space for future space station flight operations. The primary objective was to establish and test the flow of real-time data from the simulator to vehicle displays within mission control infrastructure. A secondary objective focused on exercising these tools in a controlled environment, allowing an experienced flight control team to assess the tool's effectiveness, they said. Even with various progress, Axiom has a serious deadline. At the conclusion of the International Space Station program, the station will be deorbited in a controlled manner to ensure avoidance of populated areas on Earth. Not long ago, NASA announced SpaceX was selected to develop and deliver the U.S. deorbit vehicle that will provide the capability to deorbit the space station. By now, the International Space Station has more than 23 years of continuous human presence aboard the microgravity laboratory, with assembly missions starting in 1998. The agency was quoted saying, throughout the years, NASA and its international partners have worked together to operate, maintain, and upgrade parts of the station. The technical lifetime of the station is limited by the primary structure, which includes the modules, radiators, and truss structures. The lifetime of the primary structure is affected by dynamic loading, such as spacecraft dockings and undockings, and orbital thermal cycling. NASA is committed to fully use and safely operate the space station through 2030, as the agency also works to enable and seamlessly transition to commercially owned and operated platforms in low Earth orbit, they said. With Axiom only launching a single segment, even if there are more delays, they should still have time to complete that part of the mission. Unfortunately, in the grand scheme of things, it means they'll have a much smaller and less capable station than the original plan by 2028. Over the next few months, we should hear more regarding that initial module's progress and its eventual shipment to Houston. Even though plans have changed and parts of Axiom Station have been delayed, progress is continuing on the first module. Currently, the company is aiming to launch that module no earlier than 2027, meaning there's still quite a bit of time left before we see that station docked to the ISS. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.